everybody, welcome. I am at the Putnam in our dinosaur dig. I'm really excited to be with you today. Uh, we're gonna get to share with you a lot of different cool things. Chris, our curator, is gonna share some artifacts. I'm gonna walk you through your activities that you have in your kit, and let's get started. My name's Miss Lakin. I'm an educator here at the Putnam, and I am really excited to be with you. We're gonna walk through your learning kit. So today we're gonna do your first two science activities all about dinosaurs. So go ahead, you can follow along and do your activity with me, or you can watch and listen and you can do it later. So let's grab your first kit that we're gonna do, your dinosaur kit. And inside, um, there's two, there's supplies for two activities. I'm gonna walk you through each one. And in your bag for this activity, um, we do have an activity card in your booklet. And we're gonna do the walking with the dinosaurs activity first. So for this activity, you're gonna need to gather and get your Play-Doh out of your bag. And also go ahead and grab your plastic dinosaur in there. You're gonna use that too. Okay. And uh, for your um, activity today, it is gonna be, you're gonna create a fossil. So two different types of fossils. The first one is going to be a mold, a fossil mold. And I have an example here. This is an example of a fossil mold. So a fossil mold is an impression. Um, it could be a dinosaur footprint. It could be uh, any kind of plant, such as a leaf. It could be an insect or coral or anything that would leave a mark. So it's the negative space on where uh, something was. And when it gets fossilized, we can tell a lot just by um, the fossil. It can give us clues on how a dinosaur lived, how they uh, behaved, if they were really large or really small, how they walked, they had two legs, four legs, if they traveled in groups. Um, even we can find clues on how they, um, how they ate. Did they stalk other animals? Um, lots of different things that we could tell just by a fossil. Okay, so go ahead and grab your Play-Doh and I'm gonna have you uh, make it into a disc. So go ahead and um, see how it feels, play around with it. And then the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flatten it into a disc. And this is gonna be what we're gonna make our um, fossil mold in. Okay, so for this, go ahead and get it kind of flat, but don't make it super thin. You kind of, you wanna have um, um, a little thickness to it. Okay, and let's see, for, for my uh, fossil mold, I'm gonna create dinosaur footprints with my fingers, but you could also use your uh, dino skeleton that you have. Um, otherwise, you can also use things that you have at home, maybe like a spoon or even a toothpick to create um, different textures on your, on your fossil. Okay, so I'm just gonna put um, a couple markings in here and I'm gonna even put um, an impression of this, of our plastic dino here. And when you do this, make sure you don't press too hard, um, otherwise it'll go through your Play-Doh. Okay. So here is my fossil mold, and you can see that something was there. It's not there anymore, but there's evidence that something um, was there. So we can tell that this, this dino toy was right here, and it looks like some other kind of marking here. So um, maybe those were footprints, maybe those are claw marks. Um, so we can tell just by that, that little marking that something was in that right there. Okay, so this is your fossil mold, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, go ahead and experiment. If you want to mush your Play-Doh all up, 
and do a whole new new one, I wanna encourage you to try, try out different markings. And once you have your fossil mold, like uh, what you wanna keep it as, we're gonna actually make a cast from our fossil mold. So to do that, you're gonna need glue. So go ahead and grab, um, in your kit, there is a bottle of glue. So go ahead and grab that out. And to make our cast, we're gonna fill our impressions, we're gonna fill our mold with glue. And you'll just go in and put a little bit of glue. Um, I'm gonna put some in these footprints that I've created. Okay, so here we have our, our mold and our glue, which is gonna be our cast um, that's gonna dry. So we're gonna wait a couple days and then I'll come back and we'll see how it turned out. Okay, so it's been a couple days, so now it's time to see how our casts turn out. So to do this, um, go ahead and take your, uh, your Play-Doh and you're gonna pull out, um, or this one's really dry, I'm just gonna actually break it, um, to get your, your cast from your, your fossil. Okay. We have some dinosaur tracks. This one, I actually did more of the um, body of the dinosaur. So let's see how that one turned out. And this is kind of, this will be really fun to see how yours turn out because everybody's will be a little bit different. And depending on how long you wait, your, your uh, Play-Doh will be a little harder or a little softer depending on the time. Oh yeah, I know, really have to pull it out. Oh, it's gonna be cool though. Hopefully we can see the ribs. I always like when we can see a little detail. So yeah, this is, um, so this is our cast fossil. Ooh, this one's a little harder. Let's see. Well, we can get our shape of our dinosaur out of this one. So if we saw this, we could say, okay, that looks like a tail or maybe a leg. And this looks like a leg. So this part, um, oh, let's see. This part will be the, probably the upper part of the dinosaur. And then go ahead, just keep on. Um, your ladle will be, like I said, might be a little softer than mine. Um, but to reveal your cast, oh yeah, you can, you can kind of see in this one, the detail of the ribs. And just that little detail can tell us a lot. We can see our dinosaur in there. So how did yours turn out? Hi everyone, my name is Chris Chandler. I'm the curator of natural science here at the Putnam. I'm also a vertebrate paleontologist. So today we're gonna to talk about paleontology, which is one of my, my field. So I uh, thought it might be fun to talk about what is paleontology? Well, first of all, paleontology is the study of ancient life. And when you're a vertebrate paleontologist, you study animals with backbones. So you're studying ancient animals that have backbones. So that, yes, that does include dinosaurs. Um, unfortunately, we live in Iowa and Illinois and there really aren't a lot of dinosaur remains for us to find. If you look at the map, you'll see that there's a little bit you find out on the west side of um, Iowa, and that's because at one point there was a very, very large seaway that went through uh, during the Cretaceous. It went from basically the Gulf of Mexico all the way up into Canada. And there's animals that you find along with the seaway. So you do have some sediments there. But basically where we are over on this east side, there really isn't much in the way of the rocks that you need to have dinosaurs. They're just all gone. Uh, they've been eroded over those years. So once in a while, what you get is uh, dinosaur bits coming down through um, what's called glacial till. So that's stuff that the glaciers came down in the ice age and they would grind things up and move things along as they went. And sometimes you get bits and pieces of dinosaurs uh, with the glacial till here, but not very often. So we don't have much in the way of dinosaurs, but we have a lot of other wonderful things. So we have all sorts of ice age materials. We have mammoths and mastodons. We have giant ground sloths. I think that the idea of having a nine foot ground sloth is just the most incredible thing. I really want one for our collection. I only have a little bit, it's so sad. Um, so we have all sorts of wonderful things that are ice age. And then we have things that predate the dinosaurs. So we have lots of corals, trilobites, things that are called brachiopods that look a lot like clams, um, just all sorts of invertebrates. And then of course we do have um, fossil fish that are also vertebrates because they do have backbones. Um, so I have over here in the case, you'll see uh, part of the unofficial uh, state fossil of Iowa, which is a crinoid. And crinoids are these really cool um, 
animals that are uh, they're related to things like um, sea stars. They uh, look like a, a flower, but they're actually an animal. And they, most of the, the big groups of them predate dinosaurs. Um, a lot of them died out. They still exist, uh, a small group still exist of them, but most of them have become extinct. They're very cool, and one of the best places you can find them is in Iowa. So we're lucky that we have those. The other um, interesting case I have that's over here, uh, we have what are basically uh, Maison Creek material from Illinois. And Maison Creek is this really cool um, section of area of Illinois that um, you get nodules and they're like these wonderful ironstone nodules and in them you'll find remains of all sorts of critters including soft-bodied animals. So uh, the state fossil of Illinois is actually called the Tully Monster which is over here and he's a really weird looking thing and um, I think right now they're still arguing what he actually is. Uh, he ends up in a group often called Problematica because every time somebody comes up with an idea of that, oh, he's this because he has these features, and somebody else comes along and says, no, he's this because he has these features. And so I think he's still sitting in Problematica, but he's a really cool uh, animal to see. Uh, we're going to go over and talk a little bit about dinosaurs, and I'll show you the one and only dinosaur fossil we actually have in the collection. Hi there again. Um, I thought I'd point out one of the only dinosaur fossils we actually have in our collection, and it is right here. It's a dinosaur footprint, but it's not from Iowa. It's actually from the Connecticut River Valley up in uh, either Massachusetts or Connecticut. Uh, they found uh, there's all sorts of trackways that you find. One of the other things that paleontologists do is they look at all sorts of animals. You're not just talking dinosaurs, you're talking everything from um, the slime and oozy stuff that grows on your pond to, you know, giant animals like dinosaurs and mammoths and mastodons. You also look at the tracks and traces they made. A lot, you can tell a lot about an animal from the tracks it makes. Uh, sort of like how fast it can move, how long its legs might be, that sort of thing. One of the fun things about these is they found them in the um, late 1800s, middle 1800s, and there was nothing to compare them to. So when they first came out, they wrote them up as giant bird tracks. And now we're gonna do our second science activity. The second one is Ublek excavation, and it is on the back of your activity card. So go ahead and grab that out, along with uh, some of your, the rest of your things in your kit. You're gonna need a cup, a bag of cornstarch, and you're gonna need your dino, so the dino that you have. Along with your things in your bag, you're also gonna need some water. Um, so go, go ahead and measure out one third cup of water, and you're also gonna need a spoon. And this is a really, a really fun one. Um, so you're gonna take your cup and your cornstarch. Go ahead and open your bag of cornstarch. It's white and powdery. And I'm gonna recommend that you put your whole bag in your cup. And you pull your baggie up and all your cornstarch will fall, hopefully, in your, in your cup. Okay. So this is gonna make an oobleck mixture, and this is gonna be what we're gonna uh, put your dinosaur in so that you'll have your own dinosaur dig um, after it dries. Okay, so we have our cornstarch. We're gonna take our water, and I've experimented with this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna recommend that you put your water in and stir really fast, um, otherwise if you put it in a little bit of, at a time, I found that it clumps up and it's harder to stir. So if you do do that, maybe you can grab a bowl and you can mix it in like that. So um, I have it all ready here. I'm gonna put my water in all at once and give it a good mix and it's starting to clump up. Oh yeah, and we have um, our oobleck is starting to form. And it looks like you may need this at home that you may need a little bit more water, um, but be mindful not to add a ton of more water because the longer, or the more water in there, the longer it's gonna take to dry. And, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so go ahead and, if you're doing this along with me, go ahead and uh, mix up your, your oobleck so it's all mixed together. And something about oobleck is um, it acts like a liquid and a solid with how much pressure you put on it. So the slower you, you stir it, 
Um, it might be easier if you do it a little bit slower. Okay, and I have my mixture pretty, pretty, um, pretty well mixed. It's kind of, let's see, it's, it's hard, but it also acts, it's kind of, it'll act like a, a liquid when you pull it out. So we are ready to uh, put our dinosaur in here so we can create our um, dinosaur dig. So go ahead and grab your dinosaur and you can, um, I'm just gonna lay, lay mine right in here and make some observations. You can see it's starting to sink into your oobleck. Uh, you may need to help it along, um, position it, or give it a little, um, a little push. And if you push, do it slow so it, it covers um, the whole dinosaur. And um, looks like mine's sinking in. So after our dinosaur sinks all the way in and we can't see it anymore, um, it's okay if it's sticking out a little bit. Um, we're gonna let this dry for two to four days. We'll come back and we'll check out how our dino dig looks. Okay, it's been a couple days and now we are ready to start doing our digging with our dino. So you'll need a couple things to help you dig. Um, so go around your house, try to find a couple um, things that would be helpful tools for you. I have a couple paint brushes, a Q-tip, a popsicle stick, and a spoon. And to help get our dried oobleck out of our container here, I'm gonna use a butter knife. And you can tell if your oobleck is ready to take out of the cup. Uh, mine even started cracking, so that's a good sign that most of the water has dried up and you're ready to start digging. Um, I have our dinosaur dig or dino excavation chunk out. I'll just show you um, how I did it. I just went along the edge with um, a butter knife and if it, if it doesn't come out quite as easily, um, easy with the butter knife, go ahead, you can use some scissors, you can kind of cut down your cup. Okay, so now we're ready. So here we go. Um, I can see my dinosaur sticking out. Maybe yours was a little bit deeper in, but um, this is the fun part. You get to act like a paleontologist, kind of discover your dinosaur. Um, so think about what tools you wanna use. Let's see, maybe I'll use my popsicle stick and a Q-tip to start off with. Kind of brush, oh, brush it, brush it away. Oh yeah, look at him. Oh, ooh, ooh, let's see. Whoa, ooh. Oh yeah, there's his feet. Let's see, maybe I'll use my spoon. And depending on, um, how dry it is, I bet um, yours might be a little bit easier, a little bit harder. Oh yeah, look, it's coming out. Oh yeah, look. And there is, you can see where his ribs were in the oobleck. Okay, let's see. And once, you, once you're at this point, um, you can use a brush or the Q-tip, that might work. Um, actually, I think I'll just... Get it all cleared off. And when paleontologists do this, they use a variety of tools. So see what works best for you and get them all clean. And if we discovered this, this would be really awesome. This is a full dinosaur. And we have our dino. So have fun uh, digging out your dino from your uh, dried oobleck. So when we talk about paleontology, you got to remember that paleontology is a mix of geology and biology. And one of the ideas of biology, of course, is adaptations. Adaptations are basically any sort of characteristic you have that help you survive so that you can carry on your lineage so that basically you can have babies and they can carry on your lineage and it goes on and on and on. So one of the things you think about adaptations is what are you know what good are they what 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 purpose do they serve well the majority actually serve a couple of important purposes one is to keep you from being somebody else's meal and the other is to find your own meal every day and then a third of course is to be appealing to the opposite sex so that you can have babies and basically uh, keep your lineage going so looking at this guy which is a saber-toothed cat. This is Smilodon. It's actually cast, so it, it, it's a really nice cast, but it's not the actual material. It's actually 
made out of stone. It's not a fossil. <laughs> um, we look at this guy and we think, well, look at those teeth. Usually when you're looking at things like this, uh, animals, when you're doing paleontology, you're actually trying to figure out how they make their living. And one of the ways we do that is by looking at how other animals, living animals, make their living. You end up with something like this and you have an animal that really doesn't have a good, what we call analog, something in um, modern times that actually functions the same way that we can come up with. So we have to dig a little deeper as to how they work. Um, one of the fun things about this guy is I always ask people to, and you can try it too, how wide can you open your mouth? Not so good, huh? <laughs> um, Smilodon actually has a really cool jaw because he has to be able to open his jaw wide enough to be able to actually use those teeth. To use those teeth, it has to be really, really wide, almost 180 degrees, so that's almost straight up and down. He has to be able to drop his jaw like that so he can use his teeth. Otherwise, they, they get in the way. Can you imagine if you could only open his jaw to about here? Every time he went to grab something, he'd end up hitting those teeth. Um, something else I have here that's kind of fun to look at is we always talk about all the different sciences you might be interested in. In paleontology, we rely on just about every science in the book. Uh, we also rely on technology, lots of technology and math these days. But one of the cool things is you can think about an engineering problem. And the problem is, how heavy is an elephant's head and how hard it must be to actually hold it up high? Now if you think about it, you got those huge tusks and you've got a great big head, right? So how do you lighten the load but still keep strength in your head? Well one of the ways you do that is you basically make a honeycomb in your skull. So if you think of things like I-beams, engineers use them all the time because they're very, very strong. The elephant does that and so do mammoths. Mammoths did that too. Uh, literally, these are really, really strong. You have almost like the I-beam set up with the eyes. Um, and this makes their skull a lot lighter because they don't have to have all that bone in there and yet it makes it really, really strong so it still can withstand all the um, things that happen when you're trying to chew and trying to hold your head up and all that sort of stuff. So uh, it's a really cool idea. And in fact, some engineers from a, a car company not too long ago was looking at this design and trying to figure out if they could use it in bumpers to make your bumper lighter but keep it strong. But paleontology also includes things like insects. And that tiny little thing there is actually a fly. And it's a fossil fly, and if you get it up under a microscope, you actually can see the wings and the veining in the wings and everything. So it's really cool when you think about paleo because we cover the biggest things and the littlest things. We cover huge expanses of time. And we also sometimes come into animals that do things differently than any of the animals we know of today. Uh, one of the principles of geology is uniformitarianism. And that basically means that all the processes that are happening today are the processes that happened millions of years ago. So, like, nothing new is under the sun, right? So, um, we've had to change that a bit. Uh, when that was first proposed, of course, they didn't know anything about ice ages. So they didn't realize there could be these giant ice sheets that came down and, and pulverized things. Um, we didn't know anything about asteroids and meteorites hitting the Earth and uh, causing catastrophic changes to the Earth's climate. Um, so. We still use the principle, but we also make sure that there's uh, a bit of wiggle room in there for other ideas. We hope you had fun learning about dinosaurs today, and we hope to see you in the Putnam's Dino Dig soon.